As she said, my name is uh, Christopher Baker. I'm the director of the Central Asian Studies Institute at the American University of Central Asia, as well as the head of its Master of Arts program in Central Asian Studies at AUCA. And MACAS is a sort of broad-based area studies program that focuses on the Central Asian region. And we try to provide a broad sort of introduction to the region, both to the historical architecture um, of the region that informs the present, um, as well as a the series of sort of present challenges that the region faces. Um, so we try to take a look at all aspects of Central Asia and provide students a sort of a firm ground um, in Central Asian studies by covering political, cultural, historical, social, and sort of economic dynamics. We try to take a look at everything and give students a broad sort of overview of the region. <clears throat> Excuse me. In terms of what the program has to offer, what is really unique about MACAS is it provides students the ability to study Central Asia in Central Asia. So when I was a graduate student at Indiana University, it was four or five years before I was able to practice Kazakh or Russian in Central Asia. At MACAS and at AUCA, you can study Central Asian history in a classroom or Central Asian economics in a classroom and then walk outside into an immersive cultural and linguistic environment. Um, you can study at AUCA while becoming fluent in Russian or in Kyrgyz, and you can actually learn and take part in Central Asian culture uh, the moment you walk outside of the classroom. So one of the, the most unique things that MACAS has to offer is this ability um, to study a region within the region and for students to sort of immerse themselves in the culture and languages of that region while they study it. Um, the other thing that, that MACAS really has to offer is its small class size, um, which allows us to really tailor instruction and to build a program around the students who enter it. Um, MACAS rarely has more than eight or 10 students at once. Um, we have very small class sizes, so the average class size will be three or four students. And a lot of years there is sort of parity between the number of professors in the department and the number of students. Um, which means that students get a lot of attention. It also means that we can sort of alter and shape the program to fit a particular student's needs. So we can create students, or sorry, we can create electives to help a particular student um, if they are interested in some aspect of Central Asia. And we can build a course around those students. The small class sizes um, gives us that flexibility and gives us the ability to basically tailor a program to our students and create a very sort of customizable experience um, for our graduate students. Um, what I would also note is that Cassie or Makas, uh, my apologies, is a broad-based Central Asian Studies area, area studies program, uh, but the majority of our students who come here study in areas that sort of align with Osun's sort of stated priorities um, in human rights and development and environmental issues. So we have a range of students who enter the program each year, and a lot of those students are interested in questions of human rights. They're interested in development issues in Afghanistan. Um, we have a student who just finished a master's thesis um, on the Uyghur diaspora in Kyrgyzstan um, against the background of the ethnic cleansing and the other repression that is going on against the Uyghur minority in Xinjiang right now. But the majority of our students are interested in issues of development, interested in issues of policy, um, interested in both environmental issues past and present. And what we try to do at MACAS is provide students a broad enough based understanding of the region so that they can sort of navigate these issues effectively and so that they can confront and deal with and engage these issues. Um, in an informed manner. So we want to make sure that they have an understanding of the history of the region and of the past events in the region that shape the present, as well as of the issues that are critical in present day Central Asia. So what I would also note is that MACAS has a faculty that is expert in Central Asia and that comes from some of the best institutions um, that focus on Central Asia. So we have professors, for example, from the Central Eurasian Studies Department at Indiana University who received PhDs there. And SUS is widely considered not just the only sort of Central Eurasian Studies program in the United States, um, but probably one of the only places you can go in the United States or the world 
and just focus on Central Asian history, Central Asian languages, and Central Asian cultures. Um, so we have professors from that institution, as well as from the Max Planck Institute in Germany. And the woman in the photo is Svetlana Jackson, who is quite an esteemed scholar um, of Central Asia, and particularly of Central Asian oral epics, and a very sort of established um, research scholar on the anthropology and ethnography of Central Asia. Um, we also have Nargiza Muratalieva, who is with the Institute of War and Peace Reporting um, in Bishkek, and also runs the Kabar Asia platform, which is a online platform that deals with issues of policy and the environment and development in Central Asia, and that publishes regular sort of um, position papers on critical issues in Central Asia. So we really have quite a good and diverse faculty, faculty that focus on literature, faculty that focus on history, and we have been successful at attracting good faculty to AUCA um, because it allows those faculty to do their research and to study the region while also living in it. Um, one of the other things that we are able to offer our students is a series of exchanges and probably the most um, popular exchange we have is with Indiana University and in particular with its Central Eurasian Studies Department. Um, every year we send uh, one or two graduate students to study at Indiana University as part of an exchange where they can spend eight weeks or up to a semester doing direct directed research projects on the IU campus and under the supervision of one of the faculty members of the Central Eurasian Studies Department of Indiana University. And this is a competitive sort of program. Um, only one or two students get to go each year, but it's something that we get to offer our students. And also as part of that exchange, we are able to offer a whole series of language courses. Our students are able to join the online courses that are offered by Indiana University and the wide variety of Central Asian languages that they offer there, including Uyghur, Kazakh, Kyrgyz, Uzbek, and a host of others. So all of our students um, are allowed to sit in on those courses and to participate in those courses and be graded in those courses. And it greatly expands the sort of range of languages that we have to offer um, at AUCA. So in terms of applying to MACAS, we accept applications on a rolling basis, so there's no specific deadline. Um, we consider applications as they come in, and the application process is relatively painless. We just ask for a CV, two letters of recommendation, copies of official university transcripts, um, and a statement of purpose outlining the reasons for cho choosing the program. If the student finished at a university in Osun where English is the primary language, they don't have to worry about tests. Um, and basically what we want are students who are interested in the Central Asian region, who have an interest in learning about the history and present politics of the region. Um, and our desire is to bring students in and provide them with a broad-based overview of Central Asia. And if you're interested, I can leave this up for a minute. Um, you can find more information at the MACAS website. You can also contact me directly at my email, baker under ch at AUCAKG or at my WhatsApp, which is 996-558-743-414. And just uh, for one last thing, I just wanted to stress that the, the main sort of selling points we have from Akas, the things that we can offer that most other programs can't, is our ability to allow our students to study a region within the region, to come to Central Asia and study Central Asia, and to walk out of classrooms and immediately be immersed in the linguistic particularities and cultural particularities of Central Asia. And the other thing we have to offer is our sort of small class size and the very sort of close ratio of faculty to students, which allows us to develop, to devote a lot of attention to our students um, and to sort of develop and devise and, and shape sort of specially tailored programs for them. So thank you very much. I appreciate your time and attention.